This is a very brief presentation I did at college today regarding my final major project. So please um, take it as it is and I hope you really enjoy it. I've realised that actually my uh, presentation has been cut off brutally at the end. Uh, so I've just added an extra slide um, towards the end just to add a couple of things and the final goodbyes. And uh, the other thing is that I've noticed that uh, when I think I'm deleting the video recording, I just deleted the me seeing the video while I'm actually recording, but you will still see my little lovely face. So um, bear with me and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Bye! So, hello, this is uh, my FMP, the pitch that I did uh, today at college in a presentation for my FMP, which is my final major project as um, ending and closing uh, my two years of um, UAL founded foundation in art and design that I started last year. Uh, so the heart of this presentation was to show the progression that I did from last year and in this slide you can actually see stuff that I've done on the left hand side and on the right hand side instead you will be able to see um, exhibitions, uh, volunteering, corporations um, and, and places where I've actually uh, been during the past the past year and I've actually also gone back um, this year. Um, I just come back from a three day of full immersion in London again Tate Modern, British Museum etc. So uh, this was just to show my progression from last year which of course closed and ended with the conservation, which is the exhibition on the earthquake of um, the Friuli earthquake in 1976, and that I uh, did a Blackburn Cathedral in um, May of this year. In the meantime, in between the two years, what I did, um, I've started a new blog, which is The Perfect World. Thank you very much for the people who are reading it. Um, I've done a lot of critical reflection, I've done a lot of self-reflection, pushed the boundaries and uh, um, I did some extra work on, uh, on myself and my techniques. Um, I've tried to learn a bit more about what it means is in asserting myself and in defining me and of course a part of this um, page and part of the uh, final major project is um, it refers to that and um, there is also an extensive bibliography and referencing that is that can be found on the blog and on the website. So when I started working on the FMP, so I'm going to take the camera off now. So when I started working on the deciding on what the final major project would have been, I was wondering uh, if there has to be, if it was focused on an approach, ideas, uh, techniques or different interests, uh, if I'm planning to go to university or not. Um, if it had to be serious or just fun, more theoretical, more practical, if it had to be based with within or on the outside of uh, Blackburn, um, and um, if it was just for me, just to have fun, or if I had to take into consideration also the grade at the, at the end of the year. Uh, when I decided, I decided to focus my study, my research on ideas uh, and of course uh, um, I could focus my work on plaster still, even though that potentially could have been even easy because I worked last year uh, and hence boring. Um, I had this concept that I wanted to explore about beauty and the theory and art for art's sake and art just for beauty. And then uh, for the ones who have read the blog previously, I just I talked about Blackburn on Sea. So I've redone some of the, map, the maps of Blackburn. Um, if I'm uh, thinking of, or coming from the experience of fluxes that I explored last year, the idea of nothing came up. So it was fun, the idea of actually doing an FMP on nothing, not on emptiness and nothingness, but really on nothing. Um, or since I am, I'm coming from a writing and a writer perspective, uh, looking at the theoretical approach of artists as a writer, sometimes or most of the times, writers don't consider themselves artists. Um, if they, if they decide to define themselves besides writers as author, uh, but writer as artist, which that would have been something that I really liked. I was really also interested in uh, creating a sense of convergence in the stuff that I've previously studied. 
um, I'm 52 and I've done different things in my life. So um, I was interested in glottology and semiotics and German philology, which were part of my also my previous two books, uh, symbols or Mesopotamia and the Hanging Gardens of. Uh, um, that's something that's always fascinated me. The sense of the, I call it the Lara Croft effect. So the sense of adventure and the traveler, uh, there's this this women who travels and. Um, of course, being a psychotherapist, I like the idea that my uh, final major project has to be to have somehow some connections with a philosophical, spiritual, or a therapeutic or psychotherapeutic perspective. Um, and, and of course, the journaling and the writing. So when I decided to focus on the writing somehow, was the potential of writing uh, or exploring the book, which is what I'm doing now because I'm writing my sixth book. Um, I've decided to explore art and artists who use words. Um, I could uh, then go through the idea of an academic research, or, and, and there is already the, the, the writing of the blog, which is the perfect word on my website. If I decided to focus on the book that I'm writing at the moment, I could have experienced or explored the book from an idea of clothes or costumes, if it was a stage production, so design of a stage, a map, um, working on a 3D from an architectural design perspective, the house and the bridge that are in, um, in the book, uh, the book itself as a, as a project, so it's going to be like the, the cover design and everything uh, could have been short story extracts uh, from also 3d that is waves and clay plaster mix and, and um, one of the tutors mentioned the fact of creating own mythology and the idea of spoken word so the, the i like the idea of having an fmp now for an exhibition which is in mid-june which gives me an an, an open scope um in what I can actually explore uh, and, and it's not narrowing myself down into why I want to do these things and explore these things. But what and how? So what happened was that I explored some of the artists that I like and here are some. The first one at the top is actually um, an artist who does this beautiful sensory map following like the Inuit um, fishing maps. Uh, he, this guy here, he, he's a surfer from Portugal and, and he carves these beautiful, beautiful waves in, um, in Gibson. And of course, uh, I like David Callas and Helen Glassford and of course her colors and her use of medium. Um, Valeriana Nascimento and her son Lucas Ferreira who work with the clay and body materials and they just caused that is the idea of repetition even in conservation I did these 111 pieces so I like the idea of repeating. Narek Wan and Marita Erimo who did this beautiful beautiful in South Korea I think. Um, Olivia Pellerin who did these little pebbles and stones and Jukitsun she uses a lot of mythological and, and um, horns and, and parts of animals into her working with uh, with clay and plaster. Nicolas Bonilla MacNeil, another one who does a lot of um, repetition. Clara Fialco, she's from the States and she does this beautiful ma magical word uh, uh, that reminds me a lot of Hunter Wasser, uh, the Austrian artist. Emily Garfield, and if you don't follow her, you can follow her on Instagram, Emily Mack, uh, JC Oliver, and Lateral. Hector Spalletti, who unfortunately, uh, he passed away, um, I think, last month, and he did this beautiful um, exhibition with all the different colors of the Adriatic Sea, and of course, I come from the Adriatic Sea, so that felt very close to home. So I'm going to the classics, of course, where I'm talking about Ben Nicol. So I started making something and for the ones who follow me on my blog, so I'm going to be very short in here, but you can find everything else on my website. So I started working with plaster, cement fondue, uh, wood. Uh, I tried and did different things and a lot of other experiments in between. So here it's not exhaustive, the presentation in here, but you can find everything else on the website if you want to. 
Um, I did because I'm not very good at painting, so I tried some watercolors and I did some acrylic. Um, I did some mixed media. I tried with I tried to experiment colors and materials and mark making, which is all new um, new to me. Um, in order, especially because I want to find a sort of like a common thread, a common ideas in potentially the the, make, the marks that I'm making. So. Um, this is, for example, this is completely new for me. Uh, a lot of people, they say when they see it, I said that they like, but I don't know, I am very much more this very linear, this is a watercolor uh, that I try to do on some heavy, very heavy kind of paper. Uh, then I decided to explore three dimensionality, but again, some mark making and these keep on, keep on coming back. So I did even more because I wanted to learn also how not to feel um, contained, obliged, constrained by layers so not to be attached. Not, don't get attached to layers, but just make a layer and then cover it with something else and scratch and make another layer and cover it with something else. So don't feel obliged that you just do one layer and that is it, that is finished. So it's also an emotional pushing the boundary. These following two pictures are two large panels, 120 by 120 on wood that I did, and which I really, really pushed my own emotional boundaries in making in making them. This is titled Kodaka. This is something that I'm still working on. I'm not so convinced. I've added some extra markings today with some Chinese wax. Not convinced. I'm not so sure. Uh, do I like it? I, don't, I really don't know. It's cracking up a lot. Um, it seems that it's, I don't know, it feels like it's sweating uh, somehow. It's, it's got a life on its own. So I'm going to leave it for now. And I also have always had this concept of being invisible, having felt invisible for such a long time, which now from my emotional perspective, uh, I decide to make it become my somehow my superpower. So I often draw simple squares with dots, uh, with a lot of external validation and conditioning. Uh, again, being a psychotherapist, that comes very easy uh, to me. And um, I remember that last year when I was playing with things, I did, I did this. I remember I did this one here on the right. I've got a friend of mine, Patricia, and when we were at college together, <laughs> of course we discussed a lot the idea of being uh, artist or not being not an artist she had the plug and i had the glass as words uh, to work on we both were with jamie holman um, and his banner um, and then i started working with uh, on clay and we had lectures about duchamp and his so there was there was there was a lot of uh, there was Chiron retrograde and in Pisces, and there was a lot of emotional um, uh, things going on. So I like the idea of actually drawing. Uh, um, this is a, I, what I end up doing, for example, uh, now. As in, this is just like my journal, basically, and my and my doodling. Or these ones here, for example, this one here, this one here, this one here this one these are actually all under paintings all the paintings that you've seen before these are actually the mark making that i do before painting but somehow i'm more interested in actually the under painting than the painting them and this is what i've been doing for the past couple of days being in london i went to see the british museum and something clicked within me so outside of the british museum i headed to waterstones in trafalgar square and i sat there and took out some paper and uh, this is actually some Chinese journal um, paper, rice paper, very thin and not so easy to uh, uh, use a, a pencil, it's a hard pencil. On. So these are different things. This is actually my, my a page from my journal. And this is what I actually like to do. And the more I study them or the more I do them, the easier they come. It seems like there is a, a different mark making depending of the a pen or pencil or crayons or colors that I'm actually that I'm actually
but I have to say that I studied electronic and electrotechnics for four years um, from the age of about 14 till I was 18, 19 when then I moved to another college and did something completely different but I still did a lot of physics and a lot of math but this is actually my starting point when I went to university in Italy I did um, a lot of studies on German philology, glottology, linguistics and semiotics and of course and then I went um, I think that was July 1990 I went to France uh, to the Val de Merveille or Montbego where I actually did a whole study on gravure of the inscriptions and incisions of historical populations uh, of between the border between Italy and France and these are all the signs and symbols and signatures of that period of course languages with uh, the different kind of alphabets so if you start here for example you call the latin one let me just see if i can actually do it in another color it's easier for you to see and then the greek one which is the one that the most known latin and greek but then you can actually go to the hieroglyphics um this is the uh babylus which is another one which i really liked um but um or arabic which another one that we see quite often but for example if you go I don't know if it actually you can actually see there should be the Sephaitic one which is really nice and then if you think about the Futhark in uh, old um, in old English and Celtic population so there is a lot of mark making and doodling and etc so this is what I'm interested in here <laughs> these are actually three images from three uh, movies um, I think there is uh, this one here, I think, is a Lara Croft. This is from uh, the house with the wall, with the clock in its wall, and this is from, I think, an Indiana Jones. So there is a recording and the journaling, and, and it seems that everything now comes a bit together with the mark making, the archiving things, and the ar the um, archaeological perspective and research. This, unfortunately, I'm really sorry, this is not a very good picture, but this, for example, are some of the notes book of Anthony Gormley's exhibition now at the Royal Academy in London, which I've seen on Sunday. Um, and, and again, journaling, mark making, notebooks, etc. And my Mesopotamian and the Assyrian Babylonians that I've always been very fond of. And if you look at the uh, mark making, that's somehow what I reproduce or how they come very similar to me the the black and the white the archiving this is one of the very oldest or if not the oldest uh, library ever recorded of all and daisies i've always thought that i was the first one to actually draw daisies in the sense of compulsion but actually here they are coming and this is again from i think it is even a proto babylonian uh, as a population so those are uh, even before what we're talking about we were talking about, I think, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm saying something, 800 before Christ, um, that kind of age, if not even older than that. When I was then, I went to the Tate, uh, of course, I took pictures of artists that I like and th things that I like. So I'm always drawn to very simple black and white and very simple, very simple lines. And this is actually something that I did myself in one of those uh, electronic walls at the Tate now left it there for the another thing that i've always been interested in is the fact that from a language perspective you can actually have the same object said um uh, set into expressed into three different languages which means three different words and instead having in an exhibition having the um the description uh, being the drawing and not the word uh, above so tree, arbul and albero are in English, Friulian and Italian, but the description is actually the, the, the design and the draw, the mm. draw itself. So what next? One thing that I've noticed is that um, for me, uh, it is communication, it is archive, it is legacy, it is memory, it is lifeline. So I've did some other works which uh, you won't, we're not going to be able to see in here. Um, what I know for sure that what I'm doing is um, the fact that I keep on writing. Uh, so this is one of the last bits of the book that I am writing at the moment. Um, so this is 
me for the time being. I will keep on writing, but at this, but also I will keep on mark making and exploring things. And uh, um, for example, one of the things that I did today as an experiment, let me see if I can actually show this to you, is that I did some more mark making instead of the uh, black on the white paper. As I did this, I presented the fact that I. I like creating collage of paper so I make my own marks on paper and then I glue them together on just some piece of cardboard as an experiment um, I try to do this on um, fabric um, I like to work with parchment paper that I like its consistency and it somehow the sense of oiling um, effect this is again with some of the very thick, very thick paper. Um, something else I did, I can show it to you. Instead, I create a sense of, which is the other way around. So you've got to give me a second. <laughs> Basically, I've created like a folded book. A rolling book so this is like a sense of a lifeline which is something that I'm working on lifeline but also you can actually almost see a landscape with uh, the different marks that I've made are created with different of course crayons and pens and, pe and pencils of different um, sizes and different type of inks and every time I've worked um, on the same baseline with the pencil um, what I did I somehow um, access access uh, no access uh, um, a different level of consciousness or subconsciousness or memory or from a purely in a child perspective so I'm, I'm going back on the same kind of lifeline um, but from different levels and then what happens is that I try to enter into a tiny little fragment or memory that I have and then expand it and memory in a sense in a sense of awareness because this is this is what I like to do this sounds all very intense and um, very technical um, but I this is the kind of way that I work Yes, as I was saying, of course, the video now has been cut off. So uh, thank you very much for watching. That was really the end of the video uh, and the recording anyway. Um, so for the meantime, while I'm learning anyway to do some mark making, etc., I will keep on writing. So this is an extract of what I am writing at the moment. This is part of my book, part of, I think it is chapter 13. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this um, this draft is a very very embryonic first draft um, so anyway if you do uh, if you need any other information or anything please don't hesitate to get in contact with me um, and thank you again for watching